What's happening party people? Welcome to Punchboard Party. My name is Daniel and Father Greg and I have not been able to get together for like two weeks. And so to fill some content, to get some stuff out to you, I'm going to show you my entire board game collection. So there's a few things I totally understand. I know that a lot of you have way bigger collections than I do. Mine is tiny in comparison. And the mess that I have down here is probably nothing compared to what some of you guys have down in your game room. But I still wanted to give you a look into all the games that I own and maybe a little bit about why I own them or what I think of my collection. So yeah, that would be interesting to give a rating to my board game collection and I'm really interested party people to see what you think of my board game collection, what rating you would give it. Because I don't think it's the best, there's a lot of room for improvement here, but let's just see what we got going on. All right, so first off we have Cry, Havoc, an amazing area control game, really cool hand management going on here. We got Vasco da Gama, one of the coolest higher interaction Euro games I've ever played. Really interesting action selection mechanism going on there. Reavers of Midgard, really neat kind of I choose you follow worker placement game mechanism. It might be a little clunky in its implementation, but I think it's worth a shot. Anybody who's interested in that style of gameplay, it's a wonderful world. I think it's my second highest rated board game of all time. Okay, coming back down, we got Wingspan. And you know what? Wingspan is just sort of an obligatory entry into my collection. I have it. It's not my favorite game in the world. I don't love Wingspan, but I just can't bring myself to part with it because I know that it is here for someone who would love it one day when they come over to play. Between Two Castles of Mad King Love is probably one of my favorite drafting games of all time. I really like what it does. I think it is a really great uh, implementation of Between Two Cities. Uh, Red Rising has just a really soft spot in my heart. It came into my life at a really kind of tender moment where I was really kind of struggling. I didn't really know where I was going with my life. And it just kind of created just a nice season where the channel kind of started around Red Rising, all things considered. So I just love it for its sentimental value. And the game itself is great. I do enjoy it quite a bit. Brazil Imperial, we've only played once. And I really, really enjoy what I've seen so far of the game. I think it has a really neat sort of comes to a crescendo in its gameplay. Uh, I really want to play this again. Uh, there's some sort of secret goals that you're trying to accomplish that I really appreciate in it. Yeah, really great. Bang the Dice Game. All right, it had its day in the sun, still in my collection because of fond memories, but really it hasn't seen the table in years, literally years. And I just gotta say, party people, these games are in no particular order, and there's games on tables, there's games in bags on floors, and there's no rhyme or reason to it. It doesn't mean that I don't like the game any more or less, depending on where it is on the shelf. I have no kind of sense of organization when it comes to this collection. So you might be being driven crazy by the different box sizes on shelves, or just the kind of non-alphabetical order, or no sense of kind of what belongs where and on what cube shelf, or where or what. But just bear with me. Don't be too hard on it. Just go with the flow. We got a heavy hitter down here in Elysium. Again, really like in my top 10 board games of all time. Love it so much. One of the best drafting games of all time. Heat Pelt to the Metal. You've heard me say it's getting so much love. It's in the top 100 on Board Game Geek. I do not think it deserves to be there, but it's in my collection because it gets played. People like it. It can play a high player count. And it's a really solid racing game for sure. Meadow is a game that I want to play more. I've only played twice. I really enjoyed what I played. I think it's an excellent puzzle. Uh, Sarah doesn't love it. It's this kind of theme that I would normally play with Sarah. And she just really doesn't like how you're covering up your cards as you go. Uh, so you don't really get to sort of build up on what you're doing. And that's frustrating for her. But Cooper Island have never played. Traded this on Kijiji for another game. Forget what I traded. I think Whistle Mountain. I traded over my collection for Cooper Island. And I almost got rid of Cooper Island. But Father Greg convinced me to keep it. He voiced wanting to play it. But again, it's a four point like two weight on BGG. It just intimidates me. I don't know if we're actually gonna get to the table ever, but it's here. I think this is the newest to my collection. I just picked this up on Kijiji yesterday. This is Thebes, the original. I used to have Tomb Raiders. Didn't love it all that much. Just a lot of printing errors from Queen games that I didn't appreciate so much. And I wanted to just get the original game itself. And so now I have this in my collection. I feel pretty happy. This has been a bit of a grail game for me for a long time. 
I don't love love Thebes, but I just like having a few family games that are accessible to a lot of people kicking around. Paris is incredible. Just really like the simple puzzle that you got going on for an area majority game really coming into my own in terms of loving area control area majorities and Paris is one of the best when it comes to that. Pearls of the Earth again I've cooled on it a little bit but still really appreciate the design and this was kind of a print for forever so just being able to have easy access to Pearls of the Earth is something that I appreciate so I'm glad it is here. Relic Runners weird little game don't know what to think about it but it's here, and I think it's here to stay. Okay, got a couple great titles here. Abyss, just love Abyss. Again, in my top 10 board games of all time. Really love what Bruno Catala did with that design. Kashgar is a hidden gem to the nth degree. Just love it so, so much. It has a weird kind of, almost like a solitaire mechanism where you have cards kind of overlaying and you have to take cards off top of stacks in order to use the card that's beneath it and you kind of got to rotate these cards all the way through really interesting lords of hellas have not played bought this on discount at dragon's den games Owen just always wants me to have more mini games and this was an opportunity for me to have more mini games in my collection have been trying to get this played for quite some time and haven't found the opportunity yet shifting stones Lovely little simple game will always be around. Love this game a lot. Okay, let's check out up here what's going on. We got Quadropolis, amazing days of wonder game. This is just everything you need. Really, the metal mechanism of choosing a row or column of sort of cards and or tiles. It really comes from Quadropolis, uh, where you have a marker that has a number on it, and so it goes into the grid, that number of spaces. Just really clean mechanism for a really lovely, just above family game, I'd say. Cole Baron, Kramer, and Keesling, probably at their finest, love this game. Kingsburg has just such a soft spot in my heart. I didn't get the new edition of this because I just really have a soft spot for this edition. It's just kind of what I came into the hobby with. It was one of the games I played early into the hobby, and so it just really uh, sort of marks an epoch in my gaming. Arkham Horror, uh, third edition, I just really love this way more than I thought I was going to. And I just can't wait to get this to the table. Again, it's been a long time. I thought this was going to be like an every Halloween thing. Didn't get to the table last Halloween. So we'll see what happens there. Dale of Merchants. This is just a lovely little deck building game. If you have not played Dale of Merchants, you really got to give it a shot. It is unique in how it plays as a deck builder. And it plays really quickly. And it has lovely cute animals. And, you know, you can't really go wrong with Dale of Merchants, I don't think. Okay, every now and then I get into a I need more heavy games in my collection phase where I go around and I buy a few heavy games and then they just don't get played as often as I like. So Anachrony, I've never played own it. Love the Essential Edition. I'm not one that loves kind of big Kickstarter editions with big minis and these kinds of things and so having the Essential Edition is fine by me. Would love to get this played, of course. Zulk of the Mind Calendar. Played this on BGA quite a few times. Really enjoy it. But I uh, get to play my own physical copy of the game. But a really incredible game. It ranks highly for me in my top 100 board games. Ticket to Ride Nord Countries is my favorite Ticket to Ride game of all time. Love that is in my collection. Cascadia, great little game. There's some games that are in my collection, again, usually of a nature theme, a la Wingspan, a la Cascadia, where I have them in my collection because I know a lot of people like them and they're accessible in theme to a lot of different people, but the theme itself kind of bores me and so it doesn't attract me, but I do acknowledge that the game is a great game and a great design. So I do like Cascadia, but it's harder for me to want to play it because of just kind of the nature theme doesn't attract me. Cartographers is probably if not the best flip and right or roll and right it's really up there just the way that the scoring works in this game and the way that the kind of the polyominoes that you draw work uh, this is just an excellent implementation of a flip and right game okay if you've been watching the channel fairly recently you know ginkopolis is very high on my list really love ginkopolis council of four love that as well just incredible times of the underdark i haven't talked about for a long time but i really enjoyed my plays of it when i did play it uh a while ago but it just hasn't hit the table since i did a review on the channel this isn't going anywhere i really love what's going on it's deck building it's area control it's kind of a really cool mixture of those two things and dragon's theme is good for people who like that kind of thing as well so really enjoying tyrants of the underdark uh, i hope i can just sort of check it out some more get it played again that's i'm gonna say that about almost everything here i think <laughs> 
Quacks and Quidlinburg, this again is an essential sort of... Quacks and Quidlinburg, this is another sort of obligatory keep into my collection. I've thought about getting rid of it multiple times, but it's just one of those games where I know it's going to be loved in the board gaming hobby forever, and so to get rid of it will be foolish because I'm going to want to show it to somebody at some point in time somewhere down the road. Okay, a couple of games I really like here. Museum, Tiny Towns, Mr. Jack, Terraforming Mars, Ares Expedition. I have a soft spot for all of these games. Museum, I think, is unfortunate that it doesn't play as smoothly or in as quick of a time as it should, but otherwise, I think it's an excellent game, and I just love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, even though it doesn't get as much love as it could if it was a little bit more refined, but I don't hold that against it. Tiny Towns is just an excellent puzzle. Uh, I'm terrible at spatial reasoning, so I get frustrated with the game, but otherwise it is an excellent family game. Mr. Jack, great two-player deduction. I have very fond memories playing this with Father Greg when my son Owen was in the uh, NICU. And Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition saved Terraforming Mars franchise for me. I didn't have a lot of love for Terraforming Mars, but Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition just takes the core of what Terraforming Mars is and gives me to it in a nice punchy way. Mission Red Planet, rock and roll, man. The king is dead. This game is sick. Area control, 45 minutes tops. Amazing. You play eight cards max in the whole game. So good. Hadrian's Wall. Now, th th this is the chunkiest roll on the right I have, of course. And it's just an amazing feat that they made such a chunky uh, roll and right. Or flipping right, if you will. Now, again, Twilight Imperium Inscription has probably got this beat, I'm sure. But I haven't had a chance to play that or own that or whatever. So, for right now, Hadrian's Wall is my heaviest roll and right. <laughs> Trails of Jakana, another solid roll and right. Just love that so, so, so much. And the Builders. Oh, my goodness. I love the Builders. I can never get enough of the Builders. Just quick little engine builder. Amazing. All right. I got some stuff just <laughs> sitting up here. Uh, some Wonders Duel. Again, it's not up here for any bad reason. Great, amazing two-player design. Uh, Cartographer's Heroes. Now, this is probably up here because... Uh, I have cartographers on the shelf. I thought this was going to bring more different to the table. It's essentially the same game with like a couple of wrinkles. I didn't think that did anything the cartographers didn't do well enough. And so I'm not really all that interested in having this in my collection, but it's here. <laughs> Father Greg, early on when we were doing our top 10 board game geek games and we were trying to review all the games on the top 10 board game geek he bought pandemic legacy because we were going to have to play that and we still will have to play that but it sat there for the better part of a year now or over a year so that is my bad and i feel really bad about that so we got to get this played it's still in shrink guillotine amazing i just love guillotine cannot say too many good things about it this is just quick simple kind of take daddy card game nothing amazing here but just really fun really lighthearted. Really silly. Two big boxes up here. We've got Dwellings of Elder Vale. It just astonishes me how big the box is for Dwellings of Elder Vale for what's in the box, especially when you buy retail, which I did. There's a bunch of compartments for when I want the extra minis and things. I can fill it in the box. Great. But really, it's just... This box could be half the size and have the stuff that's in it. I wish it did. Mex vs. Minions is a whole other story. This box is chock full of minis. It is incredible. The amount of stuff you get in that box. And after these two behemoths, we have Skirmish. This is my friend's designed game that he sent to me back when I was living in London, Ontario. Uh, and I did a video of it on the channel. You can still find it. You can still look at it. Uh, this is a fun little clever design, actually. And ever since we've been back in the city together, we tried to think about game designs together and stuff, but nothing has clicked quite yet. But I'm still hopeful that we'll get together on something. Uh, and so that's in my collection. That's awesome. I love that. Okay, next little cubby, we got Forgotten Waters. I've only played the first campaign of this, but really enjoyed it. And I just need to find the right group to sit down and play this with. I think Father Greg and I would have a great time if we gave time, but I'm always wanting to play the next new thing, so just haven't gotten to it. Ohm is really great, really unique. It's your kind of uh, mid-2000s Euro through and through, worth checking out. Clank Catacombs, I gotta say meh about Clank Catacombs, and any Clank game. I just always want to like Clank more than I do. And so I keep on getting versions of it, and it just doesn't work out for me. Ark Nova. Some people are saying that doesn't deserve to be where it is on the Board Game Geek rankings. I disagree. I think this design is a really brilliant interweaving of mechanisms and a fun and thinky, crunchy power. Uh, Ark Nova is an incredible game. Okay, here's some personal favorites, Five Tribes. This has been like my number one game for so long until it got dethroned a little while ago. 
but uh, Imhotep, but still a solid, amazing, unique game. I'd say Five Tribes is one of the more unique games I have in my collection, and it just plays so crunchy, so good. Uh, Imhotep is a really mean game. It's probably the meanest game in my collection, but I just love it. I don't think I've ever been as mad at Sarah over playing a board game than when we were playing Imhotep, and she just kept on doing mean things to me because she wanted to be nice to our guests. Raja of the Ganji, so this is Sarah's favorite board game of all time, and for good reason. This is just a perfect blend of worker placement, dice manipulation, dice rolling, tile laying, all sorts of stuff. Yamatai, kind of a weird, ugly duckling cousin to five tribes, was still worth giving a shot. For sure, Jaipur, amazing two-player game. I have an older edition here. Again, haven't played this in a dog's age. Endless Winter, still haven't gotten this played. We know how Father Greg feels about Isle of Cats, so sorry to him, but this is not going anywhere. Dune Imperium, my number one game of all time, Rise of Ix expansion. Uh, I have the Immortality expansion laying around somewhere as well. We'll probably see that in just a little bit. Oh, so good. Oh, here's another cool shelf, Shadows Over Camelot. This is my favorite cooperative game of all time. Mosaic, A Story of Civilization is one of the weirdest Euro games I've played, just not really sure what to think about it. It's sticking around because I want to play it a few more times before it goes anywhere. And Ankh, Gods of Egypt is just a really nice area control, area majority style game. Okay, we got a weird shelf here. This is just a bunch of tiny games. Okay, we got Cat Lady. In the back, don't love Cat Lady. We got, <laughs> we got that's pretty clever. Uh, I don't like that game. Uh, Llama, we we'll love Llama. Llama is the best. Uh, BC Bar was all right. Uh, Archaeology, cool, cool, worth having. Uh, not, not blowing my socks off. Uh, Fox in the Forest is an amazing two-player trick-taking game. Quokes Naturalis is so good. You have to check this out if you haven't checked it out before. Uh, you, you really. Owe yourself a favor of this really uh, unique card splaying game, if you will. Headlock, paper, scissors, WWE game. My name is in the rule book for playtesting this game. That's mainly why it's in my collection. King of 12 is a really cool dice manipulation, card playing, roll, hidden roll game. Uh, really, really like this one, actually. Uh, Silencio I got, never played it. The, the rules just sounded more confusing than they need to be. It sounded like a sort of the mind style game, but I don't know. It's not making me want to play it. And Anomia, uh, really just, uh, that's plain Jane fun right there. Not so fast. Dogs of War is in this cubby. Dogs of War is like my number three or four best board game of all time. This is... So unique. So what Paulo Mori really brings to the table is the ability to bring kind of Euro sensibilities to high player interaction. And so when people complain about the multiplayer solitaire, you cannot use that complaint against Paulo Mori's designs, especially Dogs of War and Vasco da Gama. He does a great job of giving you worker placement, action selection, area majority, while keeping it so highly interactive with the other players at the table. <laughs> I'm talking way more about these games than I intended to, but you know what, my collection's not that big, so we'll just go for it, right? Earth, uh, probably the newest hotness, everyone is raving about Earth, and is well-deserved raving. Again, boring theme, but really tight, amazing design. Uh, Atlantis Rising is just one of the prettiest board games that I own. Again, it's cooperative, so it doesn't see a whole lot of play, but I really like how you feel like you're really more in control when you're playing this cooperative game. You don't feel such at the mercy of like an alpha gamer situation when you're playing this one. Everdell, I, I, I'm surprised by how much I keep loving Everdell, and it just keeps on coming higher and higher and higher and higher up my rankings the more and more I play this game. Uh, it is a perennial, like this is a game that I can play anytime, anywhere, and just really enjoy. And the Belfair expansion is nice. It gives a few little... Um, Things you can switch out from the base game that I think improve the gameplay just slightly. Uh, Ganymede, still trying to get my head around whether I enjoy Ganymede or not. People call it a Splendor Killer. That's a huge overstatement, but it does have a similar kind of vibe and feel and a cool science fiction theme. Stone Age is just, for me, uh, a beautiful kind of Sunday afternoon game. I love... It, it does play a little long for what it is, but I think it's worth the time. It's just uh, quite lovely.
Russian Railroads, loving this worker placement game right now. It's really kind of been on my mind since I played the last of Father Greg. Uh, would really like to be playing that some more. Blue Moon City. I don't think I've given Blue Moon City nearly enough credit on this channel as it deserves. And I have this kind of uh, old edition of the game. So I got this when it was out of print before Simon did a new edition of it. And it was kind of my pride and joy in my collection for a long time. But I just love the card play and the flow and the feel of this game. And kind of the multi-use card situation. Great, 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 great. Mangrovia, oh man, this is just such a nice little under the radar game. Uh, worth checking out for sure. Okay, we're into a nice little Euro shelf here. Well, we got Jamaica. You know how I feel about Jamaica. Just love it to pieces. Terra Mystica, you know, I've been thinking about Terra Mystica so much now, especially with Age of Innovation being talked about. I really want to get back to Terra Mystica, rediscover how much I do love this game. Voyages of Marco Polo is another game that I've been thinking about a lot. These two, I've been actually, have been on my, how do I get these to the table with the, some of my game groups. So I'm really excited to kind of get these back to the table. They're just perennial, just amazing games. Like, what, what a good, once a good design, always a good design. Jeezy, I'm kind of mad that I have this. I spent a lot of money on this original edition, even though the Shifting Sands edition was already out when I got this original edition. So I paid a pretty penny for it for no real good reason. And I always just think to myself, man, I really wish I just had the Shifting Sands edition so that I could play either of the game modes that come in the new edition. But you know what? I I just really enjoyed the game. I think it's a, I think it's a fantastic game. Uh, so I just got to get it played, but like the old edition is almost keeping me from playing it rather than if I had the Shifting Sands edition. Okay, Strasbourg. Just loving Strasbourg. Recently played it. Oh, still so good. It, again, another unique design and really something, you, it almost doesn't feel like a Stefan Feld game, really, but it does have his sort of a mathematical brilliance. Uh, at play where you really have to think about the moves that you're making quite carefully but then there's also kind of some swingy lucky aspects that just makes it more fun in my opinion schoolville it's it's a honeymoon game for sarah and i just uh, have really fond memories of uh, first days of marriage with sarah uh, with schoolville being played uh, at a nice little cabin uh, on the lake Aeon's End, so this is funny. This got all mixed up, upside down and backwards. I'm just terrified to look at it. The boys got into it one day and we just kind of shoved everything in the box and just slid it back onto the shelf. And I'm terrified to look and see and try and reorganize that game. But a neat co-op uh, deck building game. Agricola, all creatures big and small. I'm recently back into just the original Agricola. And so this game is also like, oh, I should pull that out for Sarah and I. And we should play a nice little game of kind of uh, Agricola Light. Patchwork, don't love Patchwork. I see why people like it, I don't love it, but here it is. Lost Ruins of Arnak, again, a delightful worker placement deck building combo of a game. Again, doesn't hit where Dune Imperium hits for me personally, but the colors and the vibrancy and the theme keep calling me to the table again and again. Dice Town is a masterpiece as far as I'm concerned. I've had so much fun with Dice Town, especially with one card in particular. Just passing that around and around and trying to hunt for the eight point horse card is really delightful and stealing from people and having stolen back, lots of fun. Oceanos, eh. It's just in my collection because the boys really like to play with the submarine kind of puzzle pieces. For sale, classic, always will be a classic, always has been a classic. Lost Cities falls in the same category. Sarah and I were really falling in love with each other while we were playing Lost Cities together back in Toronto. So again, soft spot in my heart. Okay, got these two games given to me by uh, Garfield Games, so really appreciative of that. I really like Chaos Order. It plays long, right? So it is an investment. You almost have to plan for the play of it. But the mechanisms that are put into play for this area control game are really unique and really satisfying. First Light, haven't gotten to the table yet. And I really should because it's Dice Worker Placement. I love that mechanism. I know I'm going to love this game. So I got to try it out. Aura Calcum was my surprise from this year where I was really banking on Bruno Catala coming out with a really great new, more bigger box design. And he did not disappoint this time, which he has in the past. And so I was very grateful that way. The Guild of Mercy Explorers, I've cooled on, talked about this on a previous video recently, but still a great little kind of flip and right game, uh, but more of a board game style in that version. But again, not as good as I wanted it to be, or I'm, I'm finding problems with it the more I play it. Here's a little uh, Uwe combo. We got Glass Road, which I just love. I probably love Glass Road more than Agricola, but I'm really coming to enjoy Agricola right now. And Tobago, and Tobago. What an interesting game where you're kind of 
discovering where the treasure is by determining rules. You're kind of playing cards and saying, well, the treasure's not here, the treasure is next to this, or it's not next to that kind of tile, or it's in this terrain, or not that terrain. And together, as a team, you're kind of determining where treasure is, but it's competitive, right? So you're kind of narrowing it down bit by bit, and then one person's gonna go and try and claim the treasure. Um, I had a really bad play of this a long time ago with my buddy John that kind of turned me off the game. So I gotta get back to this. Crusaders, I will be done. Amazing, like a nice Rondell action selection uh, mechanism here. Uh, really cool, really, really cool. Lanterns, the Harvest Festival, nice. Family weight, tile laying game, worth a shot, always. Furnace, so people are gonna call this an auction game, I call this a worker placement game, but really well designed, really good. Bora Bora is probably, is my favorite Stefan Fell design of all time. I just really admire this design. It is crunchy, it is heavy, but it also has kind of a levity uh, with the theme that's employed here. And the dice worker placement is just uh, bar none, really, really, really good. Pal Palaces of Carrera, another Kramer and Kiesling, knock it over the park design and bonfire. I would put quite close to Bora Bora in terms of Steffenfeld's designs, in terms of it has the same kind of weight to it. It has the same sort of crunchiness and the same sort of levity uh, and sort of a streamlined nature in while it's complicated, you kind of have a single-minded kind of track that you're going down to try and accomplish some tasks and goals uh, that is just really fun. So I really like enjoy Bonfire as well. Okay, Seven Wonders Architects. I had a lot of good things to say about this early on uh, when I first got it. I think it all stands up. It just, I haven't played it because I haven't felt the need for it, which is unfortunate because it does fill a very specific niche. But Seven Wonders is almost light enough for the people that I play games with. The Seven Wonders Architects doesn't really come out as readily as it could. Room service is still just, uh, I really love the push your luck almost of the card play in this game with this kind of action selection, this I choose, you follow, you're forced to play cards out of your hand, a different order than you might have wanted to. Uh, the player interaction here is quite high and quite satisfying as well. Century Spice Road, you know what, I have not played this game in ages and it's a crying shame that I haven't because it is just a really clean really neat engine building design here and Cyclades just aces man aces so good you want an auction kind of war slash area control game Cyclades is the one you know what I've been thinking quite a bit about trying to get a study in emerald played I'm just I almost had the opportunity and I just got gun shined and pulled the trigger on getting this played again. But uh, after playing Nanty Narking and Brass, I'm kind of hungry to get another Martin Wallace game played. The Manhattan Project is another title kind of with Terra Mystica and Voyages of Marco Polo. It was in that kind of early hobby phase for me and just so many games have been coming into my collection. I wanted to play new stuff that I haven't given the time to the old classics in my collection, the games that I really kind of were raised on, so to speak, about 10 years ago when I first got into the hobby. Manhattan Project fits squarely in that category of just an amazing worker placement game that I still have a lot of love for. Mama Lamb, Baron Park Killer. It's also not a great game, but it's good. It's very good. Uh, Odin's Ravens, I was really impressed by, actually. And Aquatari, uh, friend, Simfung Lim designed. You know what? I don't think I've ever actually played a full game of Aquatari to give it a really proper kind of statement about what I think of it or not. But I definitely um, see the brilliance in the design. It's kind of a... It has a Tobago feel a little bit, actually. We got some just games on the floor. So we got Villainous, uh, the kind of Lion King scar on the cover expansion. What's it called? Evil comes prepared. And then we got Spirium. Uh, Spirium is just such a cool design. And it's like heavy in a small package. Really neat. Sea of Clouds. Sarah really liked Sea of Clouds back in the day. Um, really, really, really nice design. Really. It's a little clunky. It's a little clunky, but it, it sticks around. I always got rid of it multiple times, but it sticks around. And then there's Villainous, the base game. Like Villainous, like Villainous. Oh, there's Doom Immortality right there, okay. Starship Samurai, really, really swingy, crazy area control game that I really enjoy. Atelier, the Painter Studio, again, talked about this quite recently on the channel quite a bit. Just has an amazing core mechanism that doesn't quite work, and so I just keep it around because I just haven't, 
had the pleasure of that core kind of action selection using dice in the same way as I found in this game. So until I find something that executes it better, uh, this is going to be sticking around. In Wonderland's War, I'm actually pretty pumped. People compare it to Quacks of Quidlinburg. Uh, again, Ryan, a party person, uh, get gifted this game, and so I'm just really excited to get this played. I think it's going to be fun, especially at higher player counts. Uh, the Crew. So I got this from a buddy because he was getting rid of it, and I don't love it, but this was before I kind of fell in love with trick-taking games. Not that I love trick-taking games, I want to give this another try. Dream Home. Kind of bummed out actually about Dream Home. There's one card missing from our version of Dream Home, and that means that you can't quite play the game because the game comes with exactly enough cards to fill the card rows for the turns in the game. So I kind of am frustrated by that, but I love Dream Home. Great drafting game. And I, I, I say love a lot here, but that's fine. Uh, Emerald picked it up at an auction the same time as uh, Vasco da Gama. It's a Rudiger Dorn earlier design, really simple looking, kind of kid friendly. Uh, again, I don't know if it's ever going to get played or not, but it's only 9 bucks, so whatever. Okay, just on the floor here, this is usually holding up one of my lights. This is the Grizzled Cooperative Game. Never played it. Own it. Got it from buddy. Don't know if I'll ever play it. Okay, over here on the table, we got Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion. We got Jekyll versus Hyde. This is just an awesome trick-taking game. Great two-player trick-taking game. Uh, I like this more than Fox in the Forest, personally. Beer and Bread, I've been playing the guts out of this game and I just love it so much. I don't think a lot of people will love it as much as I do. I think my tastes are particular to this game, so keep that in mind, but it's worth checking out for sure. Just picked this up because uh, we came to a gift card for a bookstore and they have board games there. And Owen, as always, is begging me to get mini games. And he saw that there were eight miniatures in this tiny box. And I was like, well, I've been curious about the Tiny Epic series. Cover this in a news video very early in the channel's history, so I'm kind of like, let's check it out. Let's give it some love, see how it does there. So I don't know much about it, actually. And uh, kind of excited to see if I'll fall for a cooperative dungeon crawler. Doubt it. Skull King? Yeah, probably best trick and taking game out there, really, as far as high numbers go. And family-friendly fun. Very good. Got a couple board games at a liquidation store recently. Bastion. Again, it looks like a Castle Panic sort of idea, and it looks kind of neat. I don't think it's going to be a great game, but it, I kind of want to test these out, so there's probably a video upcoming about these discount purchases. Um, I was actually super pumped to find a Quazu. It's been on my grail list for a while, because uh, it's sort of it's on a, quite a few people's hidden gems lists, and it was only 12 bucks. Very excited for Quasi when I like me a good, just light kind of card game, really. Master Fox, this was funny. I, I thought it was, there's another uh, kids game called Outfoxed, I think. Uh, and I thought it was this. And so I picked it up thinking I got a steal of a deal. And I didn't, but anyway, I'll talk about this in another video, I think. It's fine, it's fine. Better than I thought it was gonna be. And then Ceylon, really excited actually to try this out. This It was like an Essen release back in like 2019 or something. And people were really kind of high on it. Everyone seemed to like it that played it, but it just didn't have the legs to go later. So I had never heard of it before I saw it at the store. But it looks like it has a cool uh, card mechanism where there's two actions and you get one action and your opponents get the other action. Keyforge. I got into Keyforge late. I think this was like one of the last sets before they kind of closed up shop. And uh, I really enjoyed it. But again, I didn't have the people to play it with, so never got into it in any big way. Brian Brew. Hi, King of Ireland. I've talked about this quite a bit. Trick taking mixed with area control equals magic. So, good. Hanabi. Aight. The mind. Aight. Okay, got a couple more games just hanging out in a bag down here. We've got, we've got Takenoku. Great little family game. Luxor. Can't say enough good things about Luxor. Curse Court has been a revelation. Karuba is a family favorite and a favorite at the parish game night. This gets played almost every time. People love playing this at church. Just one, really fun, point salad, also great. Deus is just a really lovely Euro game. Engine building, area control, just a, a, ni a nice amalgam of things here with a really cool mechanism where you play cards in rows and when you add a card to a row, you activate all the abilities in that card's row. That's just neat. Uh, Potoku, loving Potoku, loving Potoku. And Colorado, loving Colorado right now. These are kind of my more recently played games or games I've been trying to get played. That's why they're kind of up front of the table. Strike, just fun, just fun. And Istanbul, almost got this played the other night, but we played Strasbourg 
and Vasco da Gama instead. I was looking for a nice game of five players that played relatively quickly and this kind of fits the bill. Okay, I think we're coming to the end party people of my entire board game collection. Fancy Realms just sitting on the floor, hanging out. And then we just got a little box here of Las Vegas. Love Las Vegas, nice kind of, uh, yeah, an area control dice game, really. Uh, Welcome to is a great role. So this is all, this is might be better than cartographers in my books for best role and write, but we'll see about that. Skull is just an excellent bluffing game. Love that. Code names. I mean, code names. Ticket to Ride First Journey is it Dragomino. I really wanted to like Dragomino actually. Uh, well, I really want my kids to like it, but they didn't really. And then Dixit, classic, 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 and Seven Wonders, uh, amazing. All right, party people, there we have it. That is my entire board game collection. Actually, I have a copy of Enchanted Plumes in a backpack upstairs. That's worth checking out. And I have Kill Dr. Lucky, which is still at the church. For some weird reason, it didn't get put back in the bags. So that's my entire board game collection, party people. Please. Let me know what you think of my collection. How are you going to rate my collection? It has, it, it's a jumble of stuff. It's here, there, and everywhere, all over the place. I personally am going to rate my board game collection a 6.5 to a 7. There are some games that are clearly missing. There are some juggernauts, games that might not suit my taste particularly, but that I acknowledge are just juggernauts in the hobby. Those are your brasses, your Teotihuacans, your Viticultures, your Scythes. Like, those kind of games are on the top 100 and also fit the style of game that I like, like a nice chunky Euro. And so I think my collection is missing some things, but I also don't suspect those games join the collection because I'm always drawn towards kind of slightly stranger, slightly more unique, slightly more to my particular taste games than those games. Because I think, well, who am I going to play those with? And Father Greg has some of those games, and so I don't feel the need to get them into my collection. So my collection, it's not what I want it to be. I want it to have more representation of the great games in the hobby than it does have, but it also has some games that just scream me and I'm very happy about that. So let me know what you think of my board game collection and share a little of your board game collections. So party people, please, if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, all that good stuff. And until next time, party people, have the best day.